no one likes to work anymore so the people who is working is similar to the people who are dating so when you are dating someone you will do all the best you can to attract and get that love and fall in that love and when that relationship is established then you will struggle to stay and at the end maybe you will break up similar is the work in the initial stage to get that job you'll do all what you can preparing the best cv performing the best interview to get that job once you get the job day by day you will get exhausted you will struggle to wake up in the morning you will be bored in the afternoon you will exhaust in the evening so at the end maybe you'll think it's all the problem with the job so let me find the next job so you will break up or resign and you will find the next job but actually the problem was not in the relationship problem was you so here we are going to find out how to fall in love in the work how to stay in that relationship with your company and you can decide when to quit that's also important so that three things we'll talk here so the first one falling in love is based on the book love plus work from by marcus buckingham harvard business review press so we'll talk about how to make the love visible by work based on khalil gibran's profit and all and how you can detach your self you the ego of you from the work how you can just detach from that detach from the outcome how you can thrill with the uncertainties like people think that everything going by plan is good but actually it is boring you expect the unexpected that's the thrilling part so that way you will enjoy every surprises and another thing is about you don't have to give your 100 percentage keep 90 or 95 keep the 5 percentage room there you don't have to go in the full throttle how to work on your strengths people think that okay you i don't have to do much on your strengths you have to work on your weakness so that you will be a perfect but actually you should work on your advantage your unfair advantage to fall in love with work so that love that passion will come on the desirable difficulties and all we'll explain over there and the last one on that is finding the weird spirit weird spirit is something related to some ancient mythological thing what marcus was telling it's like everybody have that weird spirit so even though the twin born in a same home in the same family he'll be different because of this weird spirit concept and all so we'll talk much about that there so in staying in love we will look at the culture code the book by daniel coley so we'll th- talk about here you'll think the work you are working for a company who is doing the business that's important you should treat your work as the part of the business that's important then you look for the confirmation bias because people try to confirm ourselves or we try to be part of that same people instead of authentic expression we will be trying to fall in that confirmation bias and all we look for that and also we should prepare for vulnerabilities how we can prepare for our vulnerability so that you will be more sustainable in your career and we'll address the wage stagnation because people always have a difficulty in asking for raise and all but instead of asking for raise how you can make yourself more worthy and valuable that's what you have to think about it and another point is about work like this is your last day in your work that's important cuz sim- similar to what steve jobs used to mention like last day of my life and all so in that thing everything else will disappear and all we'll discuss about that and also we'll finally we'll talk about understanding the politics and dynamics one of the greatest politics people has to almost all people has to face maybe the work politics and third one on breakup this is a book already we have a summary in our channel 
acute by any doc so we'll talk about the kill criteria because most of the time we'll be perplexed on a situation on a breakup so if you have a criteria okay this or that that will be make, make your breakup easy and we'll talk about the expected value the absolute values and all how when we are looking at making a decision and also some cost fallacy this is important like how much you have invested so far that is a fallacy people always try to just detach from that this is not applicable to work in many other things we'll talk about that and loss aversion more than gain we are more averse to loss so how we can overcome that loss aversion we'll talk about that there and finally we'll talk about seeking the outside perspective there will be someone else brutally honest in your friend circle or someone whom you can go and ask for it that's a good thing taking that outside perspective and finally we'll reassess the goals on a long term perspective like 3 minute 3 hour 3 year like there are many such techniques and all so we'll talk about such things how we can reassess the goals on a long term perspective when we are deciding to break up or leave your job are you exhausted dragging yourself to work every day struggling to even get out of the bed feeling trapped by a job you cannot escape you're not alone millions of people worldwide grapple with work every day struggling to find a purpose and meaning out of it which has been exacerbated by poor management growth opportunities work life balance under compensation corporate pressure intense competition you name it all of the external reasons but above all those reasons outside we don't see or find find our self at work or we don't see the problem inside us we work because someone else told us to do that or we have no other choice to pay our bills no wonder why many of us feel drained in such office environment we become something like a vinyl record spinning without a needle on it emotion without any music instead of daydreaming about the next opportunity let us explore how to make our current work more engaging and fulfilling how to find the love the quest and passion at work exploring the purpose ownership and your own self at work strategies for making your projects more exciting and meaningful we are going to shift our perspective to see the work as more than just a paycheck we are going to transform the way we think and act about your work by igniting the true fire inside us so the first one is falling in love based on the book love plus work by marcus buckingham published by harvard business review so we'll start with work is love made visible from the famous poem the prophet by khalil gibran it has a section on on work so that whole poem is actually a conversation of a wise man al mustafa uh answering to the questions so it starts with love by a woman and lot and this one is coming from a farmer and al mustafa is telling on work he is telling work is love made visible we'll go into it so see if you have love love deep love inside you if you are not doing anything how it will get channelized that's a question you can think it in multiple aspects of it but let us focus on work now so if somebody have a deep love of doing something say a brewer because adam smith wealth of nations he is telling that each people who is doing the work he is actually doing for himself that was more of a selfish explanation by adam smith but here khalil gibran is taking it in the another level he is taking telling it as a spiritual way like the way we i am doing my work i am sharing the best of what i can that passion into that work and that way every work you see every line of business the transaction is happening like someone else is a beneficiary of that your work so that way you are getting paid or you are getting as a profit or whatever it is even in the work or business and the other person is benefiting from it that's how the whole economy works so instead of treating work as a curse because people tell that okay freedom 
or financial freedom or something it's it's like not doing anything or you don't have to work but actually without work or doing nothing is a punishment even for retirees and all so we are trying to change that version of work is not a curse work is something you can make the love inside you visible to the world second one detach your self from work so put it another way put the ego outside the door of your office so ego is something which is helpful when you are expressing yourself or when you are a threat or competition like that but in a work scenario especially when you are working with someone else there will be lot of challenges of having an ego so ego put it simply ego is something like who you are a definition of you to you so that one if you put it in competition every interaction every feedback from coming from your team or your higher management or from your colleagues everything will be attacking you so first thing don't put your ego for the fight take it outside and also don't put your ego into the competition so that way you can somehow practice vulnerabilities the point here is like there are a lot of situations you will get embarrassed by a lot of things but if you practice that scenario suppose say you practice a scenario where your colleague is coming and telling you some abuse words or something you can imagine that situation and then you can try to see what you will respond to it you see your options in your mind and you choose the best option which is not escalating that topic so somehow you are practicing that vulnerabilities because most of the time when you are hit with the ego your response will be automatic you are not getting a rational thinking space to reply to it instead you will be emotionally responding to it so if you practice that vulnerability you can improve or you can somehow take that love into the work instead if you put yourself into the work that love will not happen that love cannot come out so detach yourself from the outcome also that's another thing like uh we are supposed to do lot of things in the business and work where winning is desirable like you bid for a tender or you bid for whatever it is like any project or programming software any endeavor your company is doing success is suggested nobody will tell that okay you can succeed 80 percentage always every company will look for the highest possible success rate but the point is that nobody is going to get it every time so instead of focusing on the outcome detach yourself from the outcome you do your best and then let you learn from that outcome you don't have to attach to it that failure or even success that's not by you that's a contribution of lot of things happening around including your team colleagues your beneficiaries your customers stakeholders many people interacted that's how that outcome happened same will be for the failure as well third one thrill with uncertainties so most of us there is two way of thinking about work first one it will be more relaxed in that case everything will go like every day same somehow it was the boring like there is no surprises or anything like that everything is programmed but the point is that such work can be easily replaced by a machine or a robot or an artificial intelligence but there is another way of work or another working environment where you will be hit with lot of surprises so you can do it in two way you can pray for not having uncertainties or you get stressed by uncertainties that's one way of looking at it there is another way of looking at it just taking it as an opportunity to to show yourself opportunity to solve it like you are taking it like an action hero you find an opportunity 
if you look at the james bond mission impossible and all they are going for it irrespective of whatever is happening it so you thrilled by that uncertainty that's actually the best way to love the work because if you get stressed about uncertainties sooner or later you could be replaced by anything but if you thrilled with uncertainty which unpredictable things then you are irre- irreplaceable so somehow you are that much agile that that much fluid that you are inevitable and essential part of the team like that so thrill with uncertainties don't pray for not having surprises let that happen and let the universe unfold itself also this you cannot control everything on that surprise scenario something you can do it rest let it unfold in front of you learn from that understand from the next time you get the surprise you have a learning from your earlier surprises don't give your 100 percentage the point here is to take your legs from the accelerator because most of the time we push ourselves to the maximum but actually there is 80 20 principle telling that there is 20 percentage of the things are important 80 percentage is not attributable a lot of explanation out of this 80 20 principle but here what we are trying to take that same aspect is even you work 80 or 90 percentage and even if you work 100 percentage actually there is a law of diminishing return happen no extra benefit will happen to your work but instead you will not get have a room to accommodate something extra or some ex- some some surprises or something like that you will be completely occupied so that way you will be fully exhausted instead if you give that 80 percentage that 20 percentage buffer that will give you the smoothness in your work you will be more relaxed more creative and that will be benefit not only for your work for your team and company also you don't have to push yourself to that push yourself to 100 percent that's the idea so you have to set realistic expectations like so. there are some tasks maybe you need some time to make it but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't extend or being lazy but set realistic expectations for you you cannot complete a one week wor- work in a one hour like that you should be realistic on that that way you'll not take pull or put yourself on 100 percentage like that and also some great things actually require time so be realistic on that and that way you can plan on that and also try to prioritize your task so everything is not pri- important like when you're working say for example when you have lot of task in the morning try to see which one if i'm not doing now is going to have a greatest impact for the company our customer and myself you will get an answer to that that way you can prioritize that there will be something very simple thing silly things maybe it is already in your task list maybe it's delayed also but it doesn't have any direct impact on when you are doing it you could do it next week also so prioritize the task and learn to say no also sometimes you don't have to tell yes to everything you have to see whether you have to do it now or later so such aspects you can look at it so overall don't put your or don't drive with a full throttle just drive give some room for some allowance for some creativity in your work fifth one work on your strengths so all we always try to become the perfect version of ourselves but actually everybody have some strength and weakness so gallup study is been told that when somebody is focused on strength they are going to be six times more engaged in work rather than somebody trying to focus on their weakness so also you can do it another way for example your strength is something which you created by lot of 
tuning up which happened in the past so maybe you polish little more you can get that diamond out of it instead if there is a weakness which is already in a charcoal stage or a carbon stage it require too much time to polish it and while you are polishing it maybe your current strength will get weakened also so overall instead of improving the weakness best is to increase your strengths that way you will have an advantage like you will be a specialist in that particular strength of the topic because like a team is actually one of the important things of a team is to have a versatility versatility in that team so that like each people will have a different level of strength and weakness that balance each other and that way that will give a good outcome if you remember back the mastermind principle of uh, napoleon hill and all he's telling the same thing like andrew carnegie used to keep a mastermind team even uh, many people like henry ford thomas edison and all so what they do is that they have their strengths but they will they will seek someone else to support for something else let us take an example of steve jobs so steve jobs is a visionary but he want his strength is that and he cannot create a program or such technical things so he collaborated with steve wozniak and also he is not expert in designing or something so he go and take jonathan ive to design this iphone mac and all then he is not expert in operational and that spreadsheet model he is very fluidic person and all he is not that much organized person so he go and get tim cook so that is how that combination is actually built apple if there is only visionary the steve jobs and he is always sitting in his or bedroom or wherever it is and just having vision only there is no work going to happen to make that love visible and there is no going to have any strength or something like that so that strength of each people taking out created that best in app find your wired spirit or weird spirit w y r d it's actually an anglo saxon word it's talking about everything so far happened is interconnected and it is actually destined like that something like a fate principle and all similar thought you can found it in agasha records and all like similar concept is that like everything is already happened the future is already there if you time travel to future you can find it something like that because there are some incidents where many inventors actually come across to a particular topic like theory of relativity or invention of radio you see that many people invented that one in the same time because that that universe that record that destiny is actually waiting to give that to someone else so something like that so here let us take that finding your weird spirit here marcus was telling everybody have some uniqueness inside you like for example say maybe you yourself your grandfather or your father everybody may be having some trait which is common that inheritance is there but i'm telling you will feel that inheritance like something inside you may you love the pet or enjoy a particular music something like that so there is something inside you which you don't know what it is something we call as born talent or something so which is driving you you are more than your conscious effort to improve it something inside you is guiding you to make it happen that's actually the weird spirit so the one way to look at it is that try to see the patterns try to reflect on you observe it and try to understand it and then improve it that's the idea of uh, harnessing that weird spirit but the point is that you don't have to put too much effort on that there should be some level of allowance to evolutionize and also you don't have to too much pigeon hole on that also try to understand it because sometime you can just polish that skills 
which one way may be available as a weird spirit another way maybe it is available in your dna code you can just fire it and that can just improve your way you are working because everybody is unique even everything it is not only voice or fingerprint or anything like that even every spirit every entity is actually unique god created a particular person or a universe created a particular person because he has something special to do in this world so your work whichever way you call it even there are 100000 or 1 million people having the same job title you can only do the work the way you are doing now so you are unique so find and harness your weird spirit so second one staying in love so first one is understand the business of your company because most of the people struggle in a workplace because they take it too much things personal it is irrespective of a profit making company or non profit organization generally because most of us actually spend most of our waking hours in an organization where you work or where you do the business so if you understand the business of it what i'm trying to tell here like say for example your supervisor or your whoever it is your manager or your colleague whoever they give you a task that is maybe because of it is fulfilling a business so if you understand the business of that company you can take that as something as a mission to achieve instead if you take it personal you will think that okay my manager is giving this work because he want me to hurt me or he don't like me relaxed i'm telling there can be take n number of reasons but instead if you understand the business you can better accept a customer risk request a customer is giving that business he has a problem and we are the company going to solve it so his problem is actually a path to our business so understanding that business will better equip you to understand the company how it is working its flaws and its good things because every company is not going to be perfect some company will have too much pressures and all because recently also you see like news by ernest and eng and all ey uh, uh, overworks and such thing news are there because there are some of the big five organizations and all so you cannot always blame a company of doing overwork like it is also an employee understanding his own aspect understanding why the company is doing and also working yourself to achieve it like for example there are some people who just think that okay if i stay more in office that is good so that way they will take all the task in the relaxed way this instead of work which can be completed in 5 hour they are going to complete in 10 or 12 hours and they feel that they are doing something great but actually that's wrong company is also failing out of it and you are also failing out of it so understand the company's business okay you have to deliver this in a better way at the earliest possible time based on the priorities of the company so that way there will not be anything happening you will be benefiting to yourself as well as your company confirmation bias and authenticity because when you work in a company especially there is a greatest chance of you having a confirmation bias putting it simply like you have a separate opinion of some topic maybe but still everyone else is going with one opinion you don't want to be looking special or isolated because as a human being as a social being we try to be part of a tribe that's one of the reason when there is something happening in social media and all we always try to protect the tribe like if you are affiliated to a political person you try to do everything to just tell that okay that is right even though you did not try to investigate it or you have no idea whether it is right or wrong same happened to a sports star or anything like that we try to be in a tribe same thing is actually affecting this confirmation bias also 
we feel that our survival will be threat if we are on a separate thing like that but actually there is a problem this one this confirmation bias is going to take the special in you that authentic expression is missing and it will stifle the innovation and creativity and lot of things so the point here is that if you follow the things what we mentioned in the steps previously detaching your ego and other things it is advisable that you have your authentic expression don't fear yourself being isolated be authentic that way you appreciate the other side but you are giving a new reflection of what you think about it based on your thing that authentic expression because more than anything like abraham maslow's theory of hierarchy of needs and telling that money lot of things it will not take you to the highest thing highest level of a particular need is self actualization so you creating something self for you the highest level like that so that level of contribution you can give only when you are in an authentic expression so try to be authentic and try to understand the patterns when you are trying to deal with something or when you have is trying to tell some opinion try to see if the confirmation bias is making you to confirm on it or it is something else that way if you understand the confirmation bias is in the play try to get rid of it and try to present your authentic expression and be vulnerable practice the vulnerability so third one prepare for vulnerabilities as i mentioned like this is something next to what we discussed earlier say when you have a new idea presenting you got a new idea to solve something one of the main thing which is holding you back to present in front of your management or something that will be the vulnerability but actually there is a greatest power for vulnerability when brene brown has a famous book on the same so point here is that if you make a scenario planning okay imagine okay what will happen what are the vulnerable possibilities when i present this idea i have an idea so you think okay this will happen maybe somebody will smile at it or they will just uh, tell that my idea is not good you can have that scenario plan and then you practice it in your mind because even michael phelps used to do this one when he's going for competition even many many athletics and many people used to so if you practice that in your mind you will be in a better position to just face that vulnerability because that is actually one of the important opportunities because every place where you have to show yourself the vulnerability is going to be there so day by day if you practice it you will be perfect on that then addressing the wage stagnation using skills when you are staying in a company for sure maybe growth will be dependent on multiple companies some people some companies most of the companies you will see the growth in the initial stage of your career and then maybe you will not have a growth in terms of your position as well as your salary when it is going forward so there are two type of skills one is routine skills and cognitive skills routine skills is something like especially during the initial part of your job you are getting adapted to the the way that company is working so after 6 months or something you'll be expert on that and that will get you hold on that initial years of your work but afterwards cognitive skills and that level of skills is going to make a long lasting impact on your work so if you only doing the initial routine work you will feel stagnated so one way is to acquire more skills on that way of cognitive thinking will improve your skill set even though your company don't have a plan to it if you make your your uh, skills inevitable for that business that business will somehow has to find a way to reward you back so try to improve your skills in all the aspects of the work especially the way in your strengths you have maybe some strengths you find it in yourself try to 
apply or improve those skills so that you will be become inevitable at the end they have to pay you more so work like your last day in the office so this one may be similar to what steve jobs was telling about uh, work like last day in our office and all uh, i mean the life and all so the point here is that there are lot of things which is going to affect you maybe when you are working in some company or something there may be many days or hours of work that burden will be already haunting you inside you but when you think this is the last thing to going to do everything will get disappear like for example suppose you are in a notice period in a company that days of work will be more different than the one month you work before you get that job it will be totally different the steve jobs idea was telling that when you are going to die if you think that you are going to die everything else every fear every uncertainty is will just disappear so when you think that this is your last day of your work then every small conflict or disturbances or haunting you all that memories every bad experience will just disappear you just do what you are do want to do you will be more productive your quality of work will improve that side and final one understanding the people dynamics and the politics as i mentioned before in the introduction politics most of the people has to face maybe in the office as well as maybe in your immediate family relationship and all because that is a sum relationship which we are spending most of our time then for sure you will get some level of politics on your fronts as well but as office is the most important one you will have a struggle initially you will feel that this is all too much personal they're like they're taking it too much to put me down or something but if you look at little more inside it what's happening you will understand there is more thing to it like somebody is having a political influence on you there are multiple things is happening there one way they may be doing it for their own survival they like them more than you there is something in you which they feel is a threat to their existence or they may feel that you if they you become grown they will not get the appreciation so that way they'll put you down lot of such things so in effect the best way to manage that politics is to understand the interest that motivation that drive and the reasons behind those politics that way you can understand so you cannot solve that with politics actually the best way to deal with politics is to leave it and let it evolve by itself but one way it is a good learning opportunity to, for you to understand a person especially when the people are angry or they are very much uh, on a fighting mode and all you will see the real person all of the other things there will be some illusions around it so try to understand what is driving them and every scenario try to see whether your understanding is correct that way you can just take that dynamics that politics in a way which is manageable for you and you can stay in that politics sometime maybe you have to show your authentic expressions and tell no sometime you have to give them a feedback that you understand what they are doing but in another way you should sometimes surprise them also by supporting them an unexpected way because in your inside you don't have to keep that emotions you don't have to keep that attachment actually try to understand the why behind the politics and you can better manage that so third section time to break up the relationship so another way quitting your job based on the book quit by anne do Charlie so Duke uh, one of the key things in the book is talking about establishing a kill criteria cuz when we come across a decision to quit actually our decision is not always rational 
we are an emotional being souls so somehow our decision making become flawed but the skill criteria will make you more rational in such situation for example like if you take an example of for a startup maybe if you are not getting profitable in 18 months or one year or something then you should stop this business that's a clear objective kill criteria or if you are not getting a job in next 6 months in this industry i will change the industry so that much objective specific and to the time will make things easy for you to quit otherwise there is lot of things will get you holding you making the decisions so make your kill criteria especially in the job because you have lot of other values missions goals try to put your kill criteria or define it in advance you don't have to wait for that opportunity you tell that okay if this happen in my job at this stage at this particular thing then i will quit this job that kill criteria is there when you become that opportunity you just quit that's it is yes that second one is calculating the expected value it's a little more mathematical but don't worry expected value is something like the value of your success when you are making this decision like for example you plan to quit this job and find the next job so the value of that success or changing the job into probability of that success that two things if you add it to the value of failure and probability of failure that combinational sum is the expected value or putting it more simpler to you so if you stay in the job how much you will succeed and if you leave that job what is going to affect you and what is the possibility of success that can make your decisions easy sometime maybe you stay in the job you will have lot of benefits of okay you can to get this you don't have to change your home you don't have to do lot of things you don't have to change your kids school and lot of things but on the other way if you change the job you have a greater chance to become successful there you will get a better position you will get a better salary maybe you will fail on little aspects of family of something initially maybe you will have to spend little more on changing your home like but that combination will give you an idea about whether it is good to take this opportunity or very simply we tell it it's we call it opportunity cost opportunity cost is something like you try to discard an opportunity how what you will lose by taking this opportunity that's an opportunity cost so try to understand that expected value which is the summation of probability of and the success and probability into failure that summation try to understand that when you are making a decision that will enable you to make a better decision and it will be more objective as well your decision rather than subjective or emotional so overcoming the loss aversion so we all like daniel kahneman studies and all it has told that people we don't like losses we always like to have gains even that is overall if you calculate it it is less we don't want to lose a 10 dollar than getting a 100 dollar that's the idea so the problem here most of us make a decision when we are in a loss situation like for example a company is loss or your work is in loss the loss aversion will happen because at some point in time say for example your business is in loss you avoid quitting that because you will think that then you will end up a company in loss or your whole mission will end up in loss that is one way of loss aversion another way is loss aversion is that you will invest in more to avoid the past or you think that i have already invested this much to somehow come to our next topic about sunk cost fallacy and all so we'll talk about oh, we have already invested this much invested this much time invested this much time money in this work this much effort i put it in the work so let me continue that 
this is the thing but actually that waste is something and it do is telling it is something forward looking you cannot make a decision by looking backwards on that way so it should be forward looking in understanding okay this much time is wasted how we can move forward or or another way to take it is that you don't have to always take it in a monetary value or numbers on something a lot of things happening on your life you cannot quantify it in profit but it would have happened to teach you something like say you started a business if it is not profitable but you would have learned lot of things what did not work like a design so that's the learning that is actually the benefit out of it so you have all this work so far that doesn't prevent you to improve more that actually help you to understand what you done good work what you done bad work so in the next work you can focus on doing the better things and you can avoid the bad things so you can overcome the loss aversion in that way so fourth one sunk cost fallacy as i mentioned it is almost similar to the loss aversion but here more we are talking about the cost like how much we invested so try to avoid that sunk cost fallacy just don't put yourself blocked into something okay i have invested this many years in this company or this much effort but actually those things if you stay with it maybe you will increase that sunk cost like say you invested 5 year in this company and it doesn't happen like that and you stay there you are going to make it 6 year you will stay in that company like that so that sunk cost fallacy should not hold you back instead as we mentioned before look forward and make the decision and try to understand the expected value that opportunity cost and such things to make your decisions so the fifth one seeking outside perspective so for example there are lot of people maybe who is already ahead of you in the journey like a book is something like for example one of the greatest thing i look at in a book is that book is something a person's life learning it is put it in very in short number of pages and all similar way maybe you are working there are already senior in front of you maybe your brothers or lot of other people your seniors and all in the job so they are the best people to ask for feedback for perspective especially when they are brutally honest there are some people who is ready to tell you the hard truth even though you don't like them maybe you don't like such people in every aspect but in such scenarios they are very helpful ask them the perspective another way to look at it is to just see an outsider test like okay suppose instead of you your friend is having a situation like you what opinion you will give it to that so like this is something previous to that empirical self of william james and all so you take a different dimension of you one of the greatest thing people talk about elon musk is that he can take almost total perspective out of a situation so that way he can try to overcome lot of biases and all so try to see how you will respond to a friend when that will give you an as perspective so try to take out multiple perspective on that then that will help you to to make a decision instead of only focusing on one way then final one is reassessing your goals so for sure you should have a long term goals and all especially when you are trying to quit something let us see how this will affect your long term goals your life missions or something maybe your what you are doing in a goals your days are getting counted to become weeks and months and years to achieve your lifetime so let us see how this cutting decision will affect that so there are some techniques we used to mention by many authors even jack welch i think mel robbins and all or talking about this 555 or 333 and or 555 is mainly talking about what will happen to this decision after 5 hour 
five week and in five year so for example you are going to just resign from a job whatever it is say so five hour what will happen in five weeks how you can manage this decision and in five year what will happen by this decision if you understand that three aspects that will help you to make a better decisions fast so there are a lot of great companies and great entities even say youtube or lot of companies even twitter lot of people actually pivot pivoting is like changing like youtube started as a dating site and all now they change it to a media company lot of things you will find it in different different companies in pivoting so the point here is that you should somehow as we mentioned the kill criteria and all if this happen i'll do this so if you take that kill criteria and then you take that decisions to understand what is the opportunity cost what is expected value all these things then you try to pivot based on your long term goals that's going to help you so try to understand it and make decisions in that way if you really like to understand more about how to quit and all i really suggest this summary this video in our channel about quit 